What is the first thing that comes to mind when you think of Rick Nash? Quiet, but a uh, fun guy to be around. Uh, just a good guy. He's just a genuine person. Oh, he worked hard for everything he got. Blue Jack. Think of a, of a Blue Jack when I think of Rick Nash. Now a loose puck, Seifert, rebounded from the score! First thing I think of when I think of Rick Nash is dynamic, lethal. Highlight real goals. Here is Nash, makes a couple of moves, oh, he gets through two guys, and he scores! You gotta be kidding me! Oh, Nash goes after David, David Bacchus. Bacchus! He's not afraid to get his hands dirty and, and just get the job done. The way you could score big goals at needed times. Watch it, it scores! Woohoo! Now, Jackets in front, shoot, scores! It's Rick Nash, the captain! He did things that uh, guys his size shouldn't be able to do. Nash will be shot, yes. so he scores! Rick was hockey in Columbus. He was every kid's idol that was playing on a pond. You want to be Rick Nash. We're going to start off way back. We at ESPN launching a new franchise, NHL Legends. We go back and visit with some of the most iconic players in each franchise's history. At least that's what we told Rick Nash. As you'll see, the visit was not that, something more. I can't wait to see Rick's face. Oh. You know, he loves surprises. <laughs> <laughs> Look who did. How you doing, bud? Did you say hi to Emmy's daddy? <laughs> no. No. <gasps> I don't think daddy really likes surprises either. I, I love surprises. Yeah. You do. What does Columbus mean to you? Yeah, Columbus means everything to me. Giving back to this city and growing this city and, and watching my family grow up in this city now just makes it that much more special. Mac, like those banners, like these ones up here, okay. like this. Mm -hmm. Then one will say, like, Jessica Nash's husband, <laughs> right? Max's yeah, Max, Max, Max dad. dad. <laughs> no, it'll say Nash 61. Best moment as a Blue Jacket is when I scored the uh, tying goal in Chicago to give us our first playoff berth as an organization. It was the first year after our owner passed away, John H. McConnell. It felt like the weight of the world was off my shoulders and I remember just looking up to heaven to Mr. Mack and just kind of feeling like we finally did it and I feel like he had a huge part of it, uh, uh, that goal going across the, uh, the line. Cool, we good? Yeah? Follow me. Oh, let's go, Penny. Okay, we have to be quiet, okay? All right, let's go. Come on in, guys. Everybody, come on in. The meeting, the video is just going to be up on the everybody. Everybody. Every year, Mr. McConnell, our owner, has invited us to his place. And we've missed that now for a couple of years for the obvious reasons, the COVID world. And pleased with the start we've had, so he wanted to have a message for the team. And uh, for the same obvious reasons, again, he couldn't be here, so it's on video. So let's watch it. Bringing Major League Sports to Columbus and watching the impact the Blue Jackets have had in our community has been a great thrill in my life and a tremendous source of pride for my family. We've had a lot of great players represent our team during that time. All-Stars, Olympians, NHL award winners, and many more that have provided our fans with unforgettable nights at Nationwide Arena. Since our first season in 2000, over 300 different players have worn Columbus Blue Jacket jerseys, but no one has done it better than Rick Nash. For a decade, he was the face of our franchise. He was our best player. He became our captain. He was a perennial all-star, Rocket Richard Trophy winner, NHL Foundation Award winner, and an Olympic gold medalist. Go. My father felt a special connection with Rick, and that bond with my family has continued to this day. Rick, you are our first player to wear number 61 as a blue jacket. You're also going to be the last player to wear number 61 as a blue jacket. We're going to honor you and your family by raising 61 to the rafters at Nationwide Arena before our game against the Boston Bruins. Congratulations.
I don't even know what to say, guys. Um, thank you to the Jackets organization, Yarmo, JD. I mean, it was it was tough when I got when I got traded from here. Um, it wasn't even very fun coming back, uh, but I knew in my heart I was always a Blue Jacket. And uh, thank you for you guys for bringing me back in. And as for the players, you guys have been awesome this year. I honestly thought this meeting was about something for you guys. Enjoy this as much as possible because once you retire, this is what you miss, being around each other. I'll tell you, when, when Yarmo brought me back in, being with Clarky and Josh and Basil and JD, it brought that camaraderie back. So this is a huge deal and uh, I hope you guys enjoy wearing the jersey as much as I did. Thank you very much. Back to school, guys. <laughs> yeah. first hockey memory would be skating on the pond out behind our house. Growing up in Canada, it, it was just what, what, you, what you do. And for your first Christmas in Canada, you got a pair of skates and then it went on from there. And you know, me and my brother played in the streets every day. And then that, that turned into going to hockey schools, which turned into to joining a, uh, a hockey club and, and kind of keep playing. The first time I, I kind of wanted to be an NHL player, my mom can pull out homework from grade two or grade three that, that said, what's uh, Rick's dream? And it's to be an NHL hockey player. The turnaround gets tied up by Stathopoulos. Centering pass out in front. Backhand, they score! Short-handed goal for the Knights. Coming off the stick of Brampton native Rick Nash. I played the first year that the Hunters and, and Basil McRae bought the London Knights. The amazing thing about it, and I think the reason why they've produced so many NHL players since they bought the London Knights, is they treat it like a professional organization. But that really helped me get to the NHL. I met Columbus in Toronto the week before the draft, and I went in and met with Doug McLean, and you know he expressed that he wanted to, to draft me, and I expressed that I wanted to be in Columbus, and it was a good fit. And he was worried about some other teams jumping up ahead of them at number three. I, I just told him, I said, I would love to be in Columbus and hopefully it works out. And I remember I was sitting at the ACC and Gino Retta from TSN came running up the stairs about five minutes before the draft started. And he said, you won't believe this, but Columbus just swapped picks with Florida. <laughs> So right there it's set in. It was a weird in-between feeling of a lot of excitement, joy, a whole bunch of different emotions. With the number one selection in the draft, we select from the London Knights, Rick Nash. There it is. It was made it so much more special that it was in Toronto and you know I had a lot of family there and a lot of friends and it was a uh, exciting day that I'll never forget. We are... He loves surprises. I don't want to go to You're not going to school. What? When did you get the call from? Like two months ago. No, I'm kidding. Thursday, Wednesday. Well, that was, that was a lot. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> I feel emotionally, mentally drained now. I know. Congrats, dear. Yes, thank you. And making his way to the podium right now, President and General Manager Doug McLean, the announcer on number one New York State. I'm actually thrilled about it. He's the guy we coveted uh, since this time last year, and uh, I can't wait to see him play for the Blue Jackets. Coming to Columbus, I didn't really know what to expect. I've only really been around a city like Toronto where 
hockey is number one no matter what. So was, there was a little bit of an adjustment period. I think it was the best, best, just the best opportunity for me and it's a great city and not too far from home and I think everything was just on the upside. If you grow up in Toronto, you gotta be on a wait list for season tickets and you might not ever get them. So you have to understand when you come to a market like Columbus, especially in the early days, you had to make sure you gave fans access to your personalities off the ice. And finally, I kind of got it and understood they had to do so much in the community to make sure these people fell in love with hockey the way we did. I got my jersey on, guys. This is actually warmer than my coat, I think. So I might leave it on for the rest of the game. I think I'd be a pretty good guy as a maybe a, a left winger, yeah, right well, winger. We got a game tomorrow night. You look, uh, <laughs> look good. Enough. I'll suit you up for tomorrow night. We've got now a loop puck, Seifert rebounded from the score! Rick Nash cashes it! Welcome to the National Hockey League, Rick Nash. You know, I got to come in as an 18-year-old and, and make the team right away. Some success early on individually with winning the Rocker Richard. And, you know, finally I was, I was kind of named captain. It was kind of my team at that time. The one season that always sticks out is the season that we had our first playoff appearance. You know, although it was only four games, it was still a huge milestone for the organization. And it was a special year where a lot of things went right. Reunited, at least for this shift. Nash scores! His first playoff goal. It's 3-2. We had the Blue Jackets reach out to King and Bay on creating a custom jacket to present to Rick Nash. We decided an in-person consultation would be best. Come on in, Todd. Uh, welcome to King Inn Bay. That's great. Great to be here. It's quite a view. Thank you. That's outstanding. I know it's not blue, but if there was a sport coat that screened Rick Nash, that's it right there. Please, Todd, have a seat. So we're going to go through uh, to pick out uh, the jacket and the lining. So. How do you incorporate the blue jacket colors with it? Our founder uh, of the team, John H. McConnell, who passed away uh, a number of years ago, blue is his favorite color in his company, Worthington Industries, their logo is blue. I really like, I think I like this shade. And it has a beautiful texture to it. Yeah. And, and I was thinking that you've got a variety of, actually I brought this more so for the gray, but I think the red's uh, a good pop too. Yeah, so gray with the red. That thread. honestly might might be better. Yeah, and what we could do is on the lapel button, we can just yeah, do that in red. I like that. How is Rick's personality? Is he? Uh, he's is he... nuts. He's he's absolutely crazy. <laughs> he's very uh, he he's very uh, you know soft spoken. As great a player yeah. as he's been, he's never been you know one of those me me guys. Wants the spotlight. You know just. Yeah. He's always, he just likes to do his thing, carry himself the right way. So he's very, very reserved, I would, I would say. So okay. the things we were thinking about initially was trying to work in, you know, obviously images of him um, from playing, uh, through his playing career in Columbus. Yeah. He's a really good family man. His wife, Jess, his three kids. So, you know, some photos of that too. Because just with Rick, that feels like it's more Rick to me than just... Yeah a bunch of his stats and awards okay. and, and things like that. I think that's, I, I like it, I really like it. Excellent, um, excellent. Yeah, he's an exceptional guy, he deserves an exceptional jacket. For sure, <laughs> for sure. Thanks a lot. My pleasure, Appreciate my it. pleasure. I was getting ready to go to college at Ohio State, so I was focused on that stuff, um, not necessarily like who was a celebrity in Columbus, that stuff didn't even register. I think I'd been to one hockey game before. My best friend's dad always had tickets and he wasn't going that night. And he was like, do you wanna go? And I think we left after like the first period because we ate ice cream and we were like, this is freezing, what are we doing here? 
I was out to dinner with my mom, um, and Rick was out to dinner with one of his good friends. And my mom and the guy Rick was out with kind of knew each other from growing up in Columbus, and they both went to Ohio State at a similar time. Then we ended up like having dessert together with them. It was incredibly awkward. He's literally the most humble human you've ever met. So that's probably what attracted me the most is that, you know, and how he treated other people. That was always his priority to, to treat other people with respect and kindness. But, you know, then he can go out on the ice and do what he did. When we first started dating, I'll never forget, we were driving down Fifth Avenue. And I said, like, what's your, your like lifelong goal? Thinking he's gonna say, like, win the Stanley Cup. He had already won the Rocket Richard, win the Olympic gold medal, like something hockey related. And he's like, I really just wanna be a good dad. And I was like, like, we were like 20. I'm like, oh, that was not what I was expecting you to say. And I've always had a close family and that's been like my life goal is to have, you know, a happy family with kids and um, so I think that's when I knew. All right, I want to talk to you about what's going to go on Saturday uh, with the Rick Nash number retirement. And I'm looking forward to this Saturday night. What are, what are your expectations? What are your feelings on this? When you think of the Blue Jackets, you think of that emblem, you think of Nationwide Arena. He's the player you think about because he's a superstar. The kids recognize him in town. Uh, he was on the video games. He was the face of the franchise. He went to six or seven all-star games. You know, he represented the organization on a higher level. So you're gonna honor a guy who did so much for the team and the city and the organization. Uh, and 61 to go up in the rafters is, uh, is something he deserves and he's earned. And understand that this is not just, uh, not only a proud thing in Columbus, this is a thing the league looks at and says, yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense and that's the way it should be. Did you guys see the 61 on the ice, Mac? Yeah. Behind the nets? <laughs> One, <laughs> two, Nashes. So we'll have the first chair here for Rick, and then Jesse will be next to him, and then we can have kids, and then Grandma. Hello. Thank you. Woo! Should I go through my whole speech right now? Yeah. I want to thank everyone for coming here tonight. Sounds good to me. After you speak, you can head back this way. Then Jeff is going to ask you and the family mm -hmm. to watch the banner. Yeah. You, you want to take the family over there? Or yeah. Them? Yeah, we'll try it. Because this is this is where the banner is going to come out of. See that box? It's like a magic box. Yeah. If you play really hard for a long time, you get your own magic <laughs> box. And then we'll watch it go all the way up. Hmm. Yeah, Canada's up there. Daddy's gonna hang right by Canada, and Mr. Matt. You ready, Rims? I'm ready. <laughs> All right, good. Right, He's ready. been practicing. I'm not ready yet. Yeah. Still got some work to do. <laughs> you know, it wasn't always smooth sailing playing here in Columbus for our teams, for the organization, for me personally. It was going through another tough year, and we just traded uh, for a check for Carter and it, it seemed like we made some other moves that didn't seem like we were going in the direction of a playoff team from a few years back. So I just asked management what, what the plan was moving forward and they expressed to me that they wanted to do another rebuild. And me being 10 years in the league and coming up on 28, I didn't think it was the best thing for my career to go through another rebuild. So I asked if they would start their rebuild by trading me. It was both sides trying to get what was best for them. That was uh, the end of that time in Columbus. Scott Housen finally pulled the trigger after months of deliberating and debating. The Blue Jackets general manager has traded Rick Nash, the team's now former captain and former face of the franchise, to the New York Rangers. Has it sunk in yet? Yeah, I don't know if it has. It's still, uh, it's still very exciting and to um, you know, to be part of an original six franchise, um, it, it's amazing. Coming back to Columbus, it was always awkward. It was always weird. I understood that the fans had to boo and they had to be behind their team. And when another team comes in or another player, they're the, uh, they're the enemy. 
it is what it is. Um, it's, it's sports, but I didn't enjoy it. And now Calvert's stick is held Got by Nash. Go. No call. Oh, and well, Nash that... gonna go. Oh yeah. Nash and Calvert. The best part was when the wheels were up and we're heading back to New York. That's when I felt like, great, that's over. All right, next one's in April. We'll worry about that then. Steal. Nash scores. Jake DeBrusque. And Rick Nash has his first as a Bruin. You know, I feel like if I didn't have a few concussions that I could probably still be, still be playing. But um, I think I weighed all my options and tried to figure out what was important to me now, and that was my family. And I remember I had taken our oldest to swim lessons, and he's like, I'm done, I'm not playing anymore. And I'm like, oh, okay, like, this is it. Rick Nash has officially called it a career, announcing his retirement through his agent, Joe Resnick. I, I feel like I put my time in. I, I had a good run. I had a couple opportunities to win championships, and that was it. My kids were important to me now, and, and that's where I wanted to spend my time, and I wanted to make sure I was healthy enough to, uh, to do that. Well, the stage has been set. Nationwide Arena is ready for a franchise first as that iconic number 61 will be raised to the rafters here tonight, never to be worn again in a Columbus Blue Jackets game. So much easier being a guy. <laughs> a little weird. Um, obviously a lot of excitement, a lot of emotions. Um, looking forward to getting it started, but still trying to slow things down and, and enjoy it at the same time. But uh, it seems like it's taking a little long to, to get to going, leaving to the ring. Ready, Mac? Yeah. Oh, you want? Okay, come on, come up here. What do you think? Good. Good? Which clone do you want? Alone. Mm. Mm. Which one do you use? Which one do you usually use? I don't even know you usually no, use. No, one that you use. Okay. Mm -hmm. mm. Yes. Gonna smell good. Yeah, is there a big reason why? Okay, what's the secret? That's it? Yeah. Okay. This is my dad's first talkie t-shirt. It'll be fun. It's just all the waiting for it to actually happen. It seems like it takes so long. The buildups. Yeah, I haven't had nerves like this for a long time. And to be honest, I don't, I don't really miss it. <laughs> I mean, that's... Once the stress and all that stuff was cut out, it was uh, it was kind of nice. I mean, you miss the competitiveness and you miss the rush of scoring a goal or coming out of the tunnel. But all the other stuff is uh, is easy to uh, easy to forget. I think. I did a lot of research after and talked to a lot of people around the NHL and around the junior ranks to try to figure out what I wanted to do. Um, I, I knew I always wanted to be on the management side and on the front office side. So after talking to Yarmo and, and him hearing some of my ideas and me listening to him, I thought it was perfect. I am from Columbus. Rick's not from Columbus. And Rick was the one that's like, we're going back to Columbus. I'm like, are we? We, oh, okay, we're going back to Columbus. Um, I think the McConnell family and all the ownership, you know, really invested a lot into him and trusted him. So I think since he was 18, he's felt like this is home. And it's nice to be able to reinvest in the team in a different way for our family, for him as a job and a career. 
I started out for the first two years just kind of following Yarmo around, going on special assignments, and now I'm taking over the player development. So learning how you work with these young kids and try to build the relationships and try to build them a, a roadmap for themselves to get to the NHL. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. What's up, Rick? Hey, how are you? Oh, yeah. He's all here. What's up, guys? Hey, Nash. How are you? How are you? How are you? Good, man. How are you doing? Good. How you doing? I'm doing well. Hey, how are you? Good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you. Good. Good. Sharp. Trying. Hey, Hitch. How are you? Good. Good. You. How are you doing? Really good. Good. Have fun, man. Yeah, I'll we'll try. Okay. How are you? Good. Good to see you. How's it going? Oh, I love your jackets. Awesome. Cool. How are you doing? A long time. Hey, everybody. Good to see you guys. Thank you guys for coming. Um, yeah, thanks for uh, just reaching out. It was very cool. It was the quickest yes we've ever said, hey, do you guys think you could? Yes. <laughs> yeah. We'll be there. Well, listen, get get to your thing. We just wanted to say hey. And, yeah. We'll see you after. Yeah, we'll see you guys after. Awesome, awesome as always. I'm happy for you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Any time. Any time. All right, we ready to walk over there? As someone who loves hockey and plays the game, Rick has always been an inspiration to me and so many others in the Columbus hockey community. He's played a significant role in the growth of hockey throughout Central Ohio. All you need to do is look at the number of kids playing the game here now, and the number of players from Columbus that have gone into play in college and professionally. On behalf of the organization, are proud to present Rick with a custom blue jacket. The draft in Toronto, I think of it so often because we knew he was a talented hockey player, but we sure didn't know how good a person he was. And he was a better person than he was a hockey player, and that's saying a lot. I feel like I was the luckiest person in the world to watch your dedication and commitment transpond our team into such an incredible working group and a group that really fought and played for each other. But what I'm more impressed with is that you and Jessica came back to raise your family, to work for the Blue Jackets, and live in one of the greatest cities in North America. Every other day he was doing interviews, visiting hospitals or schools, or having to sign thousands of pitchers or pucks to help grow the game locally here in Columbus. And every time he was asked to do something, the answer was always yes. Nasher, it's been an honor to play with you and even better to watch you grow. I've seen the good days and the tough days, the ups and downs, the trades, the injuries, but you're still the great person and teammate today. No one is more deserving to be the first ever Blue Jacket race to the rafters. Congratulations, brother. It's time now. Let's hear from the man of the night. At forward, number 61, your captain, Rick Nash.
It's been 19 years, four months, and 23 days since I stepped on this ice for my first time in front of you. That night, I scored my first goal, and I heard that roar that I just heard, and I've missed it so much. Thank you. I know Mr. Mack is up watching right now. He's sitting with my Nana, with Matthias Kivlenix, and John Christie. Thank you, Mr. Mack, for all you've done, not only for the Blue Jackets, but for Columbus. You watched an 18-year-old kid grow up right in front of your eyes. You guys were very patient with me. There was a lot of ups and downs, but I'll tell you one thing. You guys made it easy to compete and work hard in a Blue Jacket jersey. This banner doesn't represent what I did. It represents what we did. My family and I are proud of the Columbus Blue Jackets. We're proud to live in Columbus, Ohio. I hope as you guys watch this banner go up to the rafters tonight, you can think about your favorite CBJ moments that you've spent with your family, friends, and loved ones. I am so humbled and so honored to lay 61 to rest right where it belongs beside Mr. Mack. Thank you. You started seeing kids wear 61. Thank you so much. My pleasure. And you saw, you still see it. How you doing? I'm good, how are you? I'm doing well. Hi, I'm Rick. Two hockey players right there. Nice. That's because of Rick. And I'm not sure there's a better representative of what Columbus needed at that time than Rick. For a guy that was the face of the franchise and had so much uh, pressure on him, he was um, as humble as can be and, and you know, was truly um, a, you know, a great teammate. To, to share the ice with him and see him at the top of his game, you know, it was, it was really cool for me. He's someone I've looked up to my whole life and um, got to learn a little bit from him and get to know him as a guy and a teammate, and uh, he lives up to all the expectations. I think this is such a big thing because you're like Columbus's child. You basically started to win the team. It's like you had a bad breakup, everyone was mad, you came back. It's like a real life story, you know? You played for those 10 years and came back and got booed and then came back and got cheered on. And everyone feels like they're a part of it. Everyone's watched you grow up in front of their eyes. Everyone just feels like they have a little piece of that. You know, it's like it's almost should be like a patchwork of everyone like going up there that's got them there. I mean, I think I'm just so proud like of the not of the player that Rick is, but more of the person he is. Tries to split the defense and walk in. Nice move. Another nice move. Oh. He scores. Oh. What a goal. Oh. It doesn't get any better than this. In front, shoot, score. Yes. Rick Nash, the captain. You know, you just play back your career in your head, kind of. You think about all those times that you were shooting in the driveway or playing on the road and going to the early practices. Uh, then you start thinking about all the sacrifices that your family made. 
all those emotions run through your head so fast and then you know to have my wife and my kids and my mom to have them there and it just kind of made it that much more special. I've always considered myself a blue jacket and it's um, it's the 10 years I've spent here I wouldn't trade it for anything.